Today I'm going to talk to you all about finding your niche as a photographer because although having a niche is not essential, I feel it can really help you bring more meaning to your photography and make your journey so much more fulfilling. months and I've been wanting to upload it ever since but I feel this video in many ways is quite personal as well as philosophical and the purpose of this video is to try and help you guys find a way of bringing more meaning and fulfillment to your photography and I wasn't quite sure if my original video did it complete justice but I've just watched it back and I definitely think that now is the time to share this video, especially given many of us are still in lockdowns around the world, but hopefully in the coming weeks or months, things are going to start to lift and we can get out and about again. I think it's a really good time now to try and think about what we want to photograph when that time comes so we can really make the most of things when freedoms are allowed once more. So I'm now going to take you back to the autumn when I filmed this video and give you all something to think about to help you with your own photography journeys and help bring more meaning to your photography. be lovely to do today is I've been wanting to do this for months now is to sit down and talk you through how you can find your niche as a photographer. Now you don't need to have a niche as a photographer in fact being a very broad range photographer who can photograph many different situations and you know many different genres is a really beneficial thing to be but I think when it comes to like outdoor photography over time you begin to develop a love and an interest for like specific landscapes or specific locations and I think it's what makes you as a photographer incredibly unique and showcases your personal journey. Now for those of you who watch many people on YouTube you'll know that there's photographers on this platform and you know elsewhere online and just in the photography world in general who only photograph one subject matter and who specialize in that subject matter you know you've got some photographers who will just photograph waves you'll get some photographers who will only photograph woodlands and um, I kind of wanted to sit down today and talk about this a little bit because I, as a photographer, I enjoy shooting all outdoor stuff. You know, I mean, obviously the majority of my photo shoots are done at the coast because it's where I get the majority of my inspiration from, where my photography journey began, and where a lot of my personal interests, hobbies, and just general vibe from life comes from, and that is then therefore reflected in my photography. And the reason I've wanted to speak about this for a while now is at the start of the year, I went to Glencoe and even if you've never been to Glencoe yourself I'm sure you'll know it's one of the most famous locations for both photography and tourists here in Scotland. The landscape there is absolutely incredible. You've got these massive uniquely shaped mountains, it's great for hill walking, the drive through the Glen itself is spectacular. But for me when it comes to photography Glencoe doesn't do it for me and when I uploaded that video back in March I think it was I got quite a lot of backlash from it from people who could not believe why I don't enjoy photographing Glencoe and I've had this in my mind ever since as to why don't I enjoy photographing Glencoe and the reason is because that sort of landscape that mountainous landscape although I can see that it's incredibly spectacular to, to go to to look at to do hill walking in when it comes to photography I just don't find much inspiration from it and that's my own personal creativity and my own personal journey and you know I admire people who go to Glencoe and come away with spectacular photographs but for me my passion my love my interests doesn't lie in those you know grand mountainous vistas it lies at places like this 
And what I wanted to do today was to sit down and try and help you find your photography niche and your photography genre. Because while I think it's incredibly good to go out there and photograph loads of different subject matters and to be a, a well-rounded, diverse photographer, I think when you can find a subject matter that really speaks to you, it really comes across in your photography. Not only do you get more enjoyment and fulfillment out of being in that specific location, but your images tend to be better because of it, because you're, you're more inspired by that landscape or that subject matter. So you're more likely to take, you know, more photographs to feel more connected with it. And therefore your images should, in many respects, be better because you've connected with that scene or that subject matter on a much deeper level. So when you're out with your camera, I want you to think about how that landscape, how that scene makes you feel, or that subject matter if it's not landscapes you're doing. You know, do you get a real sense of love from that place? Do you get a real sense of passion? And do you find yourself wanting to get your camera out time and time again and take photographs? Or do you find yourself going to some locations and just not having that interest or that inspiration to get your camera out and take loads of photographs? So I kind of want you to think when you're out with your camera, what locations fill you with joy and what locations inspire you? Because I think any creative genre, whether it's photography, painting, writing, you know, whatever it may be, it's so personal to you. And I think when it comes to photography, people just expect, especially, you know, let's, let's stick to landscapes because it's what we're talking about and what I do the majority of the time. You know, when it comes to landscapes, people expect everyone to want to go to these iconic locations and to want to photograph stunning places like, like Glencoe for instance but it doesn't do it for everybody. We all find creativity and inspiration in different places and I think that's why you know you need to think when you're doing photography or any creative genre what does it for you? What speaks to you and where do you feel most at home when you're out creating things? And I think it's just such an important thing to think about because I think especially when you put yourself online, whether, you know, maybe you've got a YouTube channel yourself or maybe you just post your, your photographs on social media or stuff like that, you know, you will find that there will be people out there who will criticise your photographs and criticise your creativity. But, you know, it's it's your creativity and it's your, your journey. And, you know, you can think about this in any terms in life. You know, you can go into a gallery and see a painting that's thousands of pounds and think, why on earth would somebody pay thousands of pounds for that? Then the next person will come in and be like, wow, I am buying that. And the same thing goes for photography. You might post an image online that you think's incredible but the next person won't like it and um, so I think the best thing you can do when it comes to photography is realize that it's your creative work it's your art form and not everybody's gonna like that and not everybody's gonna find inspiration from the same places but if you can find a genre in photography that you love and that inspires you to get out time and time again with your camera that is your niche and that is something you should really hone in on because while it's really healthy to go out and try different types of photography as many of you will have seen me doing loads of times on my channel you will also have realized that time and time again the place that i come back to time and time again is is the coast and while i'll go away for a few weeks and do woodland or do macro photography and enjoy it ultimately my main passion my main focus and my main inspiration comes from the coast and that's where the majority of my love for photography and getting out with my camera comes from and I just wanted to kind of touch on that today because of the Glencoe incident earlier in the year but also because I just think it's so important for you to think about in your own photography journeys what fills you with joy what inspires you and really think about that and get out to those locations because the more you're inspired, the more you're going to get your camera out, the more you're going to learn and ultimately at the end of the day, the better your photography is going to become and the more enjoyment you personally are going to get out of it. Photography is an impersonal experience. You know, unless you're doing it commercially and just, you know, taking photographs for other people, you know, when it comes to doing it for yourself, it's a personal experience that you should really hone in on and really enjoy. What I was really saying back then is that you don't have to just photograph one subject matter in order to have a niche. But what I would encourage you all to do is really think about how a landscape or a subject matter makes you feel when you're out with your camera. 
If you feel immense inspiration at a location, chances are that is part of your photographic niche. And if you go away and spend loads of time in a landscape and come home with very little images because you didn't find it quite as inspiring, then maybe that's something to stray away from to bring you more fulfillment in your photography or something that you may want to challenge yourself in photographing again in the future. But ultimately it's about working out what's best for you. So finding your niche is mostly about listening to your heart, your feelings and your sensations when you're out on a location and how that location makes you feel and then honing in on those feelings to release your creativity. And one thing I wanted to end this video on is to give you an example of how this has really played out in my life. As you will all know, I love Scotland and in normal times I spend the majority of my year travelling around the country, exploring as much of this country as I can and photographing it as I go. But one thing I've realised is while I can find beauty and enjoyment in all locations and landscapes around Scotland, not all of them speak to me on a creative and photography level. An example I can give you of this is I can spend a long weekend up in a mountainous region such as the Scottish Highlands for instance and I can have a whale of a time. I can do amazing hill walks, go wild swimming, enjoy the company of others, even just enjoy the journey of getting there, enjoy camping in nature. But I will often come back from these trips with very few photographs, if any, that I'm really happy with. But yeah, I can go to a local beach for an hour or two and come home with a number of images that I really like, that really speak to me and that I'm happy with. And what I've learned is that while we can find beauty and interest in all landscapes and subject matters, they aren't always going to speak to us all the time in a creative level. So really think about when you're out, what locations do you go to that you come home with images that really satisfy you? And what locations do you go to where you enjoy the adventure and the experience of being there, but photographically it doesn't quite do it for you? And that will allow you to find your niche and find what really speaks to you on a creative level. And on that note, uh, for any of you that are new to my channel, you probably won't know this, but my channel isn't all about photography. It's about photography, creativity, exploring Scotland, conservation, nature, everything really that encompasses going out and about. And obviously this past year with all the travel restrictions, I've not been able to film anything much more than photography related stuff. But when things begin to lift again, I'm going to be restarting my Explore Scotland series to go along with my photography work, as well as teaching you more about nature and other aspects of the wilderness. And this is because I've learnt that I enjoy travelling around Scotland, it's part of who I am, but it doesn't always fulfil me photographically. But I enjoy creating video and speaking about where I'm going and teaching you all about it. And that's how I'm able to release my creativity in locations that don't always speak to me photographically. But it's been about me finding my niche, listening to my heart and creating content that I really enjoy creating. So as we get back, hopefully more into normality later in this year, my content will be switching up again to go along with that. And I hope you'll enjoy many of the things that are to come on my channel, both photographically and exploring in the near future. I hope this video has given you something to think about and given you a chance to explore your own creativity when we can get out and about and enjoy the world once more. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please feel free to do so. It is our absolute joy to welcome you along on my journey and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.